Well, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> I mean, I could, I mean, I could make something from this. You don't think so, no? Maybe, maybe another time. Yeah, I've still got all the deep frames over there. Why? Deep frame diorama. Not really sure how to go about that. Not yet. Uh, something to do with like, the perspective. It might not end up very good. It's, I'm not very comfortable with it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Just, just try it, try it anyway. On your head be it, cat, if it doesn't work out. Uh, I'm sure it'll work out. Yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 65. Today I shall be making a deep frame diorama. It's like a word you just made up, Bill. It may be. Basically, I got lots of these deep frames from the charity shops and wherever else I've been, and I've been collecting them up. Because I always had this idea of making a diorama in a frame. Um, but it's not quite a diorama because it's it's not quite 3D, it's, it's 2D, but it's it's not like a real diorama you know the dimensions are going to be forced and anyway we're we'll going to that later basically that's what a deep frame diorama is to me i want to make a little story in a frame you can kind of look in the frame and see a scene and cat seems to think it's a, a good idea that i make one today i mean i wanted to make something from this new book i was sent um but no deep frame diorama he's not been the same since new orleans but, uh, what? No, it's nothing. I don't think I've really made a diorama before, actually. Um, yeah. I don't, go go watch all my videos and tell me if I've made a, a diorama. I can't remember. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait here. Don't worry. No? That was quick. So this will be my first diorama on the uh, channel. I've got a good feeling about this one. Uh, I'm going to tell you. Anyway. So, as you all know, I like to frequent my local charity shop. Now, if you're American, a charity shop is like a thrift store. Only the money goes to charity, not the person who owns the shop. Selling the goods of the dead. Bit dramatic. Shut up. What was I saying? Oh yeah, basically every time I go to a charity shop, I tend to pick up these deep frames. This one was £2.50 and it comes with its own art. Look at that. Lovely. Anyway, uh, yeah, I pick these deep frames up every time with the intention of making some kind of deep frame diorama. Now, a deep frame diorama isn't the same as a diorama because, you know, a diorama can be fully three-dimensional. A deep frame diorama, you don't have that much room to be three-dimensional. It's almost like a, a 3D painting, so it's a little bit more tricky. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tricky, and uh, I'll talk about that later. But for now, we need to remove this art from the frame because, you know, we need the frame. Now, any art lovers out there, please look away. I, I, I do apologize. I did actually try and contact the artist of this piece. Some called Iki, it's, it's a weird name. Ikiya, Ikiya, Iki, I, I'm not really sure how to pronounce the name, but uh, yeah, I couldn't get in touch. And we don't really need the glass either. So, you know, dispose of that correctly. And there we go, I have a blank canvas. I should probably try and come up with some ideas now. So when I usually make stuff on this channel, I, I try to keep everything at a certain scale. 28 millimeters, 160 scale. Uh, all my beadbots, all my robots, all my monsters, and my terrain all fit the scale. Cause that's your kind of basic tabletop game scale. Now this thing is uh, a diorama in a frame. So basically I can use any scale I want. 
So because scale isn't a problem and I work in essentially a cupboard where I can't build anything bigger than my hand, uh, we're going to make a giant robot head in the desert, like a giant dead titan or a giant dead monster. Uh, now if you know what Warhammer 40,000 is, you know what a titan is. Now that's not me stealing from Games Workshop. They'll be knocking on my door with those space marines again. Uh, that's me stealing from the ancient Greeks. I probably shouldn't have said that. They might go and try and sue the ancient Greeks now. Um, I have been to Greece before. I did meet a few old Greeks, never an ancient Greek. So I'm not sure if they can, if they exist anymore. So they may be okay. Where was I? Oh yeah. So basically I'm gonna make a giant dead robot's head sticking out of the ground and maybe a little explorer dude in front of that thing to show the scale of the uh, giant skull and um, some kind of background. Now it's gonna be really hard to show the perspective and the scale of this thing because there's not a lot of space between the back of the frame and the front of the frame. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do it, but we're gonna try it because this is Bill trying stuff. Oh no, wait, no, it's Bill making stuff, isn't it? So I've done a few designs here. I quite like the big hand reaching out the ground, but I think I'm gonna go with a giant head and particularly this one with the crystals shooting out of the orifices and two little guys in the foreground. Maybe a sunset in the back, there we go. I like the idea of that. That sounds kind of um, interesting to me. And I think that's what we're gonna go for. I'm sure it will work perfectly fine. Plus, I want to make crystals. I haven't really made crystals before. So I want to expand on the crystal skull design just a little bit more before I close the sketchbook. Uh, the crystal skull is nothing to do with Indiana Jones and the crystal skull, which is now the second worst Indiana Jones movie, may I add. I'm thinking a vibrant sunset as a backdrop to this skull, uh, but I'm also a little bit concerned that it may not show the scale of the thing. Uh, we have something in the foreground, nothing in the background. Uh, it may be a problem, but of course we won't know until we try because you are watching Bill trying stuff. No, Bill making stuff, what is wrong with me? So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website where you go to make websites. Now if you have no idea how to make a website, you don't know how to do with a HTML, is it HTML? I'm not sure. And you just want to make a website about things like, you know, like a pickle website, for example. Like, yeah, yeah, like that, like pickle perfection. That's it, Bill, click there. Uh, if you just want to make a website that's quick and easy and clean and nicely designed, then go to Squarespace. Uh, I made this website in like, you know, it must've been like 0.5 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure, but it was really easy and it looks pretty good. And I will add stuff to it at some point. But uh, yeah, if you wanna make your own website, there's a sale going on at Squarespace. There's a little link down below. Go and have a look after the episode, obviously. So I'm gonna start with the background. Basically, I'm just gonna paint a really nice sunset. Now, this sounds like an easy task. This actually took me quite a long time. I just couldn't get it right. As you can see there on my palette, the yellow is above the orange where the red should be. The, it should be red, orange, and then yellow. But I did it the wrong way around for some reason, and I just couldn't figure out why it didn't work. But it was that. Uh, I did figure it out after a couple of hours of just blending and blending. Um, and uh, yeah, look, here we go. We sort it out now. There we go. That looks a lot better. Um, but it took me a long time, basically, is what I'm saying, just to paint a gradient of color. But it's also kind of fun. You know, it looks it looks all right, it looks kind of nice. Yeah. Yep, that's the first of the drying times. There was lots of drying time in this build. It took me forever, which is why I haven't been around for a while because I've been doing this. Uh, people have been asking if I'm dead. I'm like, no, not on the outside. Um, I'm still here. I should have planned my time better, like I should be planning this narration better. Oh look, there's XPS foam there. Now, I know I always go on about XPS foam, how it's really hard to get hold of in this country. It's not hard to get hold of. Uh, it's just the thick stuff is hard to get hold of. Uh, but luckily, someone sent me a box full of it to my PO box. It actually turned up at my neighbor's house um, and I had to go over there and explain to him that it's not a box full of air. You know, there was actually stuff in it. And then we, we got talking and now I have to say hello to him every time I see him. So, you know, thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. 
So now it's time to sand. I'm gonna use my new sand needles. I bought these when I was out in Narlene's uh, when I met a few other YouTubers. You can find out all about that in my previous video. But if you don't have any sand needles from Narlene's, you could just use an emery board. They are for people's nails to make nails look nice, uh, less cat-like, I think. Uh, but you can just find them in a pound store or you could steal them from your mum. That's where I got this from. Your mum. Yeah. So I want to texture this skull and I'm going to use some EVA foam of uh, varying thicknesses. Now you can get this stuff in art stores and craft stores, usually in the kids section. I'm not sure why, I think they eat it. And this is some generic holiday wire or Christmas wire as we used to call it. Now they've changed the recipe, it's no longer coated in rubber and it's just green wire, it's nowhere near as good. I mean, it's barely even worth a pound anymore. No, I mean, it, it is worth a pound. I mean, there's still quite a lot of wire in there. It's just, uh, it's just not quite as good. Uh, you have lost a customer, Poundland. I'm only joking, only joking. That, that was a joke, Poundland. That was a, that was a, that was a silly joke, silly joke, silly joke. So essentially this skull is gonna look like a big rock, but I want there to be the hint of something mechanical underneath. So I'm gonna cut out these little EVA foam squares and I'm gonna add a few wires here and there. I'm hoping that will provide a little bit of narrative, a bit of story, and then it's not just a skull shaped rock, you know, like a uh, Goonies or something. So I stuck all the tiny and smaller rectangles and squares on the top and the back of the head to make it look like they were further away from the viewer. Uh, to maybe help with the false perspective, I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. I mean, it's not really working for me uh, yet, to be honest. Um, but you know, let's stick at it. Subscribe, will ya? For f sake, why, why haven't you subscribed yet? Just subscribe, click that button. Just click it, subscribe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you were there. I was talking, I was talking to Kat. Um, sorry about that. That might have seemed a bit uh, aggressive, but um, I was actually talking to him. He, he's this his channel he likes, and he and he just won't subscribe to it because I don't know why he won't. I just keep trying to convince him. Um, but you, you should probably subscribe to this channel as well. Actually, that's that's probably a good idea. What do you mean you don't want to? What's what's the problem? You just got to click a button. It doesn't cost you anything. Oh, sorry. No, no I was talking to him again. Um, I wasn't. No, I would never be that that rude with you lot. Um, we haven't even looked at the Patreon page. What's the matter with you? Seriously, click the link down below. I want to make some crystals. Now, I've never made crystals before. I've heard of this technique of using glue sticks from a glue gun. Um, and I don't really use my glue gun, so these things are pretty useless anyway. Basically, you want to carve the glue sticks into like a crystal shape, but you need a really sharp knife, which is not this one, so we need to change the blade for that. Uh, I always keep all my doll blades in a little box that says doll. Um, you know, it's not, it's not really funny or interesting, that's just, thought I'd just tell you that, I don't know why. Uh, just in case you wonder what that little box, oh look, there's a crystal. Now if you want your crystal to look extra shiny and translucent and crystally, stick it in a bowl of boiling water for about 30 seconds, you know, just wobble it about like that. I'm sure the wobbling helps. And look at that. It looks pretty crystally to me. Um, it's really satisfying. So I carved me uh, a ton of crystals, as you can see. And I'm going to use this transparent red colour from Vallejo to make them red. For me, it felt right if crystals were shooting out of the eye of a giant dead robot, they had to be red. You know, a little bit more gory in a way, like crystallised blood. Um, that's just the way my mind works. I'm not really sure why. I mean, my childhood was okay. And it worked really well. I didn't know glue sticks would take paint so well, but it's just the right amount of tint. It's still translucent with a touch of red. So I really wanted to bring out the edges of these crystals and I figured, you know, a little bit of dry brushing couldn't hurt. You know, it, it always makes stuff look better until it doesn't. I mean, you could say that about anything really. I just like dry brushing, okay. Nice. So the final step for our crystals is to add a bit of a shine. Now I'm going to use some of this Mod Podge gloss or luster, lustre, luster, luster. I can't pronounce that. I'm better with German words, as you all know. 
and uh, we just need to wait for it to dry. Okay. So we need to make some crusted. Now I'm gonna go black crusted for this. Technically not crusted, but I'm just gonna show you the crusted recipe anyway. So we all know how to make crusted now, yes? 100% sure we all know how to make it now. We all know it, we all know the recipe. Good, 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 okay. So time to paint the skull. Um, as you can see, I'm creating each part of the piece individually and I'm gonna assemble them together. Now that could be a bad thing or a good thing. It's probably a bad thing in my experience. I think uh, I made a mistake here, um, but we'll see, we'll see later. Um, Let's just have some fun dry brushing for now. There's lots of dry brushing in this video, so you know, at least you got that. I guess we should just stick it in the frame and have a look. So I'm gonna add a bit of ground texture here. I should have added this stuff earlier, but I made the skull separately to the ground. So, you know, this is, this is one of the problems. I've used a bit of XPS foam to make a bit of rubble with some crusted, just to kind of blend the skull into the ground. This is one of the problems when you assemble stuff together in parts. It's, it's, it takes quite a lot of planning and Bill don't do planning, not really. <sighs> It's just, it's just not really working, is it? Um, I think I'm just gonna have to have a little think. Yeah. So I'm having problems. Um, not even your regular 40 year old old man problems. I usually know what to do with builds and they usually go pretty well. I usually have a good idea of how to kind of do it. I think the first problem is I'm making the thing in three pieces. I'm making the background, the midground and the foreground. Like a, like an oil painting, you, you'd kind of want to paint it all together so you know it's gonna work together and the colors are not gonna be completely off. I don't know why I didn't do that with this. I kind of thought I was being more technical and careful not to ruin the background that I painted. It's a bit of a nightmare. It's not really working out for me. Terrain is so much easier because, you know, light comes from everywhere on a piece of terrain. You don't have to worry about where the light's coming from. Uh, this is more like a painting and there needs to be a light source and I haven't really decided on where the light's coming from. But, you know, I'm learning as I go and hopefully you're learning as I go as well. Uh, not as you go, I hope you stay. I may have a breakdown, which may be even more entertaining for you. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm probably just going to repaint the skull and we'll see where we go from there. Good idea, was it? So I'm going to repaint the skull and you all know how much I love painting, especially repainting things. My goal is really to just tone it all down, I think, make everything a bit more of a neutral colour. I'm using green washes and blue washes just to make it look more stony, but the light contrast is going to be toned right down so you could uh, have a chance of blending in with the background. I think that looks slightly better. <laughs> Now I've made some nice crystals. They look like nice crystals and as pieces of terrain, I think they would be perfect on a few little bases here and there. But as a 3D, almost 2D image in a frame, the fact that they're glossy and translucent, it doesn't help me control where the light is coming from. Uh, I'm gonna stick them in anyway, and then just, uh, they just, this doesn't look right to me. Now, before I started this image, I probably should have thought about where my light source is coming from. Now, in my head, it's coming from the left of the frame. Uh, so the, the right side of these crystals should be darker than the left. And, uh, you know, the left side should be edge highlighted. So that's what I did. Yeah, I mean, it looks slightly, slightly better, but we need them to blend in a little bit more. So I'm gonna make a weird mix uh, of thick sand, red paint, and some uh, glass Mod Podge. Now I imagine these crystals oozed out of these holes. So I want them to be almost like a liquid crystal, just dripping out the holes and kind of blending them in a little bit more. And it looks kind of slightly more gory as well, which is, you know, more fun, more interesting for me. And they should dry shiny. 
or cure quicker, depending on how anal you are about terminologies. Uh, I'm going to use a heat gun to help this thing dry, I mean cure quicker. Uh, but you know, and then I realized that, no, hold on a second. Yeah, these are, these are glue sticks. I should probably not add heat to glue sticks. So I added a sunset there, so we have a confirmed light source and uh, a little bit of an edge highlight, and it's just not bloody working, is it? Ugh. Let's bring out the oil wash. Just bring it out. Usually for me, an oil wash will just kind of unite everything together. It's like adding a tacky sepia tone to your Instagram photo, you know? And it just brings everything together. Well, it's, well, it's definitely toned it down. Um, it's just, I need to, I need to think again. I've never had to think so much in my life. Uh, look, all right, I had an idea that this might not work when I made the crystals. The crystals are translucent, transparent, or whatever. The light can travel through them. I have no control as to where the light is hitting them. So it's not going to work in the sense of like an image, like a 2D, 3D-ish image. Um, and I kind of knew that when I made it, but I just wanted to make shiny crystals. Uh, but you could easily stick those on a little base and make cool little crystal uh, terrain pieces with those. So, you know, take that one with you. So what have I learned? Okay, number one assemble the whole deep frame diorama at first you know put it all together fill the little gaps in between the pieces uh, and get a sense of scale and dimension and where things going to be glosses and transparent things uh, don't really work because we need to control where the light's coming from uh, you know basically on one side of the frame and no matter what i do to the thing it doesn't seem to be looking any better it may even be looking worse than before um, usually the more I add the better it looks uh, that's that's the secret of been making stuff just keep adding stuff until it looks good the problem I think is that the scale is off it you know there's no way it's like when I was a kid and I had this UFO book and it said if you ever spot a UFO and you want to take a photo of it make sure you get a lamppost or something in the foreground something in the background so we can tell how big the thing is you know um, Two weeks I spent out there in that field. <laughs> the point is, that's what I'm missing. There's nothing in the background. There's a, a nice colorful sky, but there's no way of telling how big this thing is. When we, we're gonna stick a little guy in the foreground, but the back, we need something in the background just to kind of bookend it and kind of give us an idea of how big this thing is. So I think I'm gonna have to uh, just basically get rid of my nicely colored background and paint some rocks in there. And I'm terrible at painting rocks. Rocks are one of the hardest things to paint freehand. I don't know why, they just, they're just really hard to paint. I just, <laughs> I just wanna move on to the next build. I've spent so long doing this already. We're gonna, we're just gonna finish it, basically. I'll paint some freehand rocks in the back and, and see if that helps. And if not, I, I just don't care. <laughs> So the oil wash is not a problem for me. We can bring that back. It's the scale of the thing. Uh, it doesn't look like a big thing. It looks like it could be something in the foreground the size of a football. Uh, and the horizon, the big, nice, colourful sky doesn't help at all with that. So I'm going to freehand some rocks, uh, rock formations, maybe a valley of rocks going off into the distance, just to, just to try and add a bit of uh, scale to this thing. And with the little guy in front, uh, it could give us our background, mid-ground and foreground, and maybe save it. If not, I'd probably just have a breakdown. There we go, that's my thumbnail idea for this video. In big writing, this build broke me, and a shocked expression on the bottom, or maybe a sad expression. I'll probably enlarge my eyes a little bit with a warp tool and put a white line around my head so you can make it out against the background. Just so you know, it's, it's my video and uh, that I'm really sad. And um, that you click, click the video. Because that's, you know, 
That's what you really want, isn't it, YouTube? You want me to fail, and then you want me to stick my stupid head on a thumbnail when I'm not going to do it! Okay, Bill. Take it easy, Bill. It's not their fault. They, they just like stupid thumbnails. That's, that's really not their fault. They're just programmed to like stupid <laughs> Okay, I've just spoken to my friend Caleb at Boiler Hobby Time and, you know, he told me in a nice calm way to just eat some lunch, which which I did, and that's kind of made me feel a little bit better. I, I do get pretty hangry if I'm hungry. And he said, just go back to doing something you, you know you can do and enjoy doing. So I'm going to make a little man using wire and uh, beads. And you know what? It's actually working. I'm feeling a lot better, a lot calmer. This is, uh, I think this is uh, really, really working. So this little guy here, I imagine, is a little explorer just kind of wandering down a valley and coming across this skull with giant crystals shooting out of its eyes. Uh, probably doesn't know what it is. Probably gonna create a cult around it, which uh, tends to happen a lot on this imaginary world. Now, we're only gonna see the back of him, so he doesn't have to be that detailed, and we just, we just need the silhouette, really. So this is a wet wipe that I've allowed to dry in the sun until it's bone dry, and I'm gonna soak it in super glue until it goes rock hard. Now, make sure you position the rags in whatever position you want them to stay in, because they're gonna stay in that position. So he needs a walking stick, and I'm gonna use this toothpick. Uh, it's not been used, um, but it has a cool little jagged pattern on there. Look, They look pretty gnarly. So we're gonna use this as a weird futuristic walking stick. Now this is cured, rock solid, look at that. And there we go. I like the idea of this walking stick being far more significant and important, like an ancient piece of technology that this guy has no idea of its use, you know, what it does. Uh, but, it, but it makes a nice walking stick and a pointy stabby stick, which is, uh, you know, that's all he needs it for, really. So I'm not going to kill myself painting this little guy. He's basically just going to be a little blob of brown and orange, and he's just going to stand as a blurry silhouette in the foreground. I'm going to use some watered down brown acrylic paint to stain the frame because it's just a bit too light and ickier for me at the moment and it needs to be a bit darker, dirtier. And let's stick the little guy in there. I think that's it. We may be... Oh, there we are. We're done. And that's... that's it. Um, I finished. I finished it. Uh, it finished me. Not really. Okay, look, I learned a lot of stuff from doing this thing. Uh, well, I learned three things that are probably quite important when making like a deep frame diorama like this or like a 3D painting or whatever it is. Um, so next time, if I ever do this again, which I probably will, maybe not on camera, um, it will be better. Because I have lots of ideas for these little, uh, these little dioramas and frames. I like the idea of it. But you know what? This video is the product at the end of the day. This is, uh, I do it just to make the video. The, the builds, I can just throw them away most of the time. I might not throw it away, but I might give it away to someone at some point, and probably to one of my patrons at some point in the future. I might give away most of my builds. It doesn't matter. The product is this episode. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, glamour shots coming up in a minute. Try not to look at the glamour shots for too long or too closely. Um, turn the lights down, maybe just look from the corner of your, your peripherals. It might look better. But I'm going to see you next episode where I'll make something I'll actually enjoy making. It might, not be, it might be less entertaining for you, though. And that's that. I did not enjoy this build at all. Everything just seemed to go wrong. Uh, I had such good ideas for it. And it just, yeah, I learned a lot, which is, I guess that's important if you want to be cheesy about it. But, you know, the product is not this picture for me. The product is this video. Did you enjoy the video? Let me know down below. I mean, you could comment down below about how much you like the build, but I'd probably accuse you of lying. You liar. But anyway, thank you, patrons, for sticking by me. And you know what? If, it, if this build is anyone's fault, it's, um, it's the patrons. Yeah, because they continue to support me throughout the... Only joking. I love you.